Hey, hey, hey there. In this video, I want to go over UPC codes. I want to kind of go over what they are, where to get them, the cost of them, the different things, how to store them inside a gear bubble. So UPC codes, I'm not an expert at UPC codes, so I'm just going to give you a basic training. Best thing to do is to ask Amazon what their current position is on different UPC codes. So where we get them, um, my girlfriend Rachel teaches a course called Low Hanging System. She's actually an expert in this stuff. And she told me to get them from Nationwide Barcode. And I don't know if it's because it's the best deal or not, but that's where I've got them. I've never had a problem with it. It's nationwidebarcode.com, I believe, or you can Google it. Um, once you get a list from them, um, you just want to make sure that they're real UPC codes. So find a good place. It's a reputable place that you can buy them from. The cost of them is going to vary based on how many you buy. If you buy like one or two, they're going to they're going to charge you way too much. They're going to overcharge you like crazy. But if you buy like a hundred, it's going to be like fifty-five to seventy cents or something like that a piece. They're really really cheap. And then, you know, obviously once you get one or two campaigns that start to sell, it makes up for the cost of all your UPC codes in the first, you know, handful of sales. So if you buy like 500 of them, they get really cheap. We're talking like 20 cents. And if you buy thousands, you can get them down to like seven, eight cents. So if you really want to start scaling this model, they don't cost much at all. And just a few campaigns make up for all of it. So don't worry so much about the cost, but you do have to buy UPC codes. It's an Amazon type restriction. It's nothing to do with us. It's just something they require for things to work for them. It's just the same thing that people put for barcodes in the back to put it in like Walmart or a store. They need to be able to look things up and this is a standardized way of doing so. So it's just a requirement for them, I think, to make things scale easily. So I'm going to show you how to upload them into Gearbubble itself. You're going to go purchase them from somewhere and then you're going to go to stores, UPC settings. Now. Depending on when you get this training video, when you get this version, we're going to try and make the formatting a little better. But that's the problem that I think a few people are running into is that the formatting is a little weird on how we format our UPC codes in here. But I'm going to show you kind of into how it works. Basically, when you have a UPC code, you can search for it later so you can pick up and find out which exact product has been pushed with that UPC code successfully. You can see if we have invalid ones or used ones or unused ones and kind of filter by those. I don't know if I have any uh, invalid ones. I've definitely got some used ones, and I've definitely got some unused ones, and you can delete them. So if for some reason you upload a bunch of UPC codes and you go, you know what, I don't want to use those for this, you can delete them back out and then just use them for whatever you want for different Amazon purposes. It's, it's all up to you. So uh, you can download an example CSV, and I might have a different one in here by the time you watch this. But the example CSV, what you really need to look at is the header and it should be UPC in lowercase, and this should be a full number. Now, my Excel program itself formats it weird, but it should be a 12-digit integer number, no, no decimals, okay? So just remember that the header of it is UPC, and then you have these, um, a 12-digit number for the actual UPC code. So I don't think you even really want to use our example CSV as much as just understand that's how it works. It's UPC in lowercase, 12-digit numbers, all the way down to where... I don't know, I've never imported a thousand, but you could just kind of put a thousand in there and it should be able to import just fine. So here's ones that I've recently purchased as UPC. Um, I got them from Nationwide, so I'm going to clean this up to the right format. Delete. I don't know what this is right here. Number stored as text. It should be fine. And then put this to lowercase, UPC. So it should be formatted correctly. I have 12 digits. This, particular UPC code has a leading zero. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 digits. Now depending on how your, your formatting thing is, it might remove this zero or it might put in that weird formatting that I had whenever it loaded up my sample CSV. That's going to depend on what actual software you're using this for, what spreadsheet type of thing, what format you have it in. So we have these things, see look, it just automatically moved into that weird formatting. So let me delete that one. Let me save this sucker and save as UPC codes, CSV, make this a comma separated values. It'll give me a few wonky weird things. And then I should be able to upload this, okay? Oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. I'm going to click Choose File, and then I click that Upload button. UPC codes should be in here correctly. Click Upload, and it should, 
look, boom, in theory work, and it did, in theory work. CSP uploaded. Now all those new different ones have loaded into my account. I've got tons and pages of those different ones out there. But I wanted to show you a few real scenarios so that if you're using a Mac or if you're using a PC or you're using some different weird spreadsheet thing, the, the key is to have that lowercase UPC as the header column title and then have a 12-digit valid UPC code in each and every single um, row, uh, each and every single column below that one, and you'll be fine. It should work. If you have any other questions, let me know. And again, we should have that, that example CSV file for you there, but depending on what you open that with, it's going to format those numbers a little bit differently. So hopefully this showed you a little bit into it. If you have any other questions about that, please hit up support. I'm going to end this video now, and I will see you in the next one.